so in today's lecture we are going to discuss about a very important topic that is the lattice vibrations so these lattice vibrations are very important uh, aspect of solid state physics and uh, with this concerns with the vibrations of these uh, atoms of crystal about their mean position and uh, these vibrations uh, occurs even at your absolute zero temperature this is due to your quantum effects due to due to due to do the minimum zero point energy because we know that from Planck's formula en is equal to n plus half h mu because when n is equal to zero at a, a minimum energy state there will be at that n is equal to zero there will be even there will be energy half h mu that means uh, at zero level there will be zero point energy so therefore there were by uh, atoms will ha also, uh, have the minimum energy to vibrate at it their equilibrium position so thus <coughs> so these vibrations are responsible for your thermal properties such as heat capacities thermal conductivity or thermal expansion etc <coughs> and they contribute greater power to your heat capacities of the metal so now uh, i have told you that they these atoms vibrate at their main position so for simplicity we consider that these atoms are connected each with each other by elastic springs so uh, hence these atoms then when they are uh, 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 they are attached with something like spring so they, this means this system will become coupled system means if this oscillate at a their main position so it also affect on this atom and you can say it affects their near, nearest neighbor atoms so thus the crystal will whole vibrate so now the crystal may vibrate freely in their normal modes there are various modes of vibration so you can say they are vibrating normal modes or they can vibrate under some dynamic external force there will be might there might be some external force if the system is not isolated and these these as uh, these external force may be of a mechanical or electromagnetic nature so <clears throat> let us start so now to study this phenomena we will put some conditions or you can say put some your uh, constraints so the first important constraint is that these all atoms are arranged in straight line like this is like a straight line and uh, with a constant spacing a because humar jo crystal hota hai iski jo spacing hoti hai jo lattice parameter hota hai wo kya hota hai constant rahega periodicity hogi to ye kya hoga inke beech mein distance kya hoga constant hoga so means interatomic spacing that is a is constant and these atoms are identical these all added uh, atoms should be identical and should have same mass m each atom should be considered as a sphere so that the solid consists of large number of spheres and other is interaction between these atoms extends up to only nearest neighbor means in ke aur iske beech mein jo interaction hogi iski maan liye jo central atom hai iski kis ke sath interaction hogi iske sath aur iske sath jo iske nearest neighbor hai and then so, and each atom is connected by its nearest neighbor by a elastic spring having spring constant beta and uh, because i have told that these are elastic strings that means there should be um, there should be your validation of hooke's law so in ke beech mein jab interaction hogi to hooke's law kya hoga hooke's law will be followed so now by using that constraint we will learn about your lattice vibration for a monoatomic lattice for the simplest case so now let us consider a linear chain of identical atoms extending along your x axis so now let the mass of this each atom is uh, m and each atom is attached to its nearest neighbor by a massless spring and further we assume that each atom is separated 
from its atom from its nearest neighbor by a let a constant lattice parameter a in equilibrium state now this type of discrete arrangement uh, of the atom is non homogeneous which can be distinguished from homogeneous medium in which line of atom is continuous that means there is no spacing between them so now for simplicity we will consider only the your longitudinal mode means only in x direction that means the motion simple harmonic motion is only in case in your x axis not in y axis that means your this is your longitudinal mode of vibration so now in this case hooke's law is obeyed so now let us consider this is your in equilibrium and this is your strained state that means suppose if you consider this atom that this is your nearest neighbors so now when this getting stretched when this is getting strained so it will be displaced from equilibrium position so therefore if this is displaced from equilibrium position then displacement is xn for this n plus atom displacement is xn plus 1 will be xn plus 2 so similar similarly this will be displacement from its mean position will be xn minus 1 displacement will be xn minus 2 for this n minus 2 atom and this will be xn minus 3 for this n minus 3 atoms this is the strain state means the here oscillation is taking place and the more of oscillation is in your x direction that means longitudinal longitudinal mode of vibrations are there so now I have told you this is equilibrium state and this is stretch state. So when the force is applied to this uh, monotomic linear monotomic chain uh, uh, chain in your x direction, when force is applied in x direction, so that means there will be displacement, and uh, your this chain will execute the simple harmonic motion or you can say vibrational motion. So now let the atom be displaced from their mean positions, and the displacement will be i have told you this will be the displacement so now uh, further i will take the interaction for particular like for this for example for this uh, nth atom so interaction for the nearest neighbor will be only considered and the interaction on of this to the these atoms n plus 2 n and minus 2 and minus 3 will be negligible because i am considering only the nearest neighbors interactions so your equation for your force applied on this strain in extraction will be containing on terms only n minus 1 and n, n plus 1 terms since i have been told that uh, interaction of this atoms will be with this atom these atoms and these atoms will be negligible so therefore the resulting force on an atom will be given by its displacement and the displacement of nearest neighbor that is n plus 1 and n minus 1 so thus the net change in length of your left and right springs attached to it so thus your net force on this nth atom will be given by the force due to this and the force due to these nearest neighbors so thus this is the force net force on the nth atom where beta is your spring constant you can say your force constant or your stiffness constant and uh, this is the displacement of n plus 1 atom minus displacement of nth atom this will be displacement of nth atom and displacement of n minus 1th atom so this is the force now from Newton's second law of motion. Newton's law of motion. Force law. That is force. Force is mass into acceleration. So therefore, this will be mass of spring. Mass spring is massless. This is mass of atoms. D. Because we are calculating our nth atom. This will be displacement of term with the rate of change of displacement this will be acceleration double rate of change of displacement of nth atom into beta 
x n plus 1 minus x n minus beta x n minus x n minus 1 so this is the double derivative of your x n x n represents the x uh, your displacement of nth atom so therefore this represents the acceleration of nth atom so this is equation number one this is equation number two so thus this equation number two represents the motion of nth atom so now this is a kind of a differential equation so now we will find this uh, the solution for this differential equation so this can be let us consider the solution for this second order differential equation is a kind of like this exponential a is constant exponential alpha omega t minus k n a where k is your wave number that means this is 2 pi upon lambda you can say wave number or you can say propagation constant and this n a represents x coordinate of nth atom where this n a represents this x coordinate of nth atom because this your uh, spacing between your all the atoms in the crystal is a that is lattice parameter so and this omega is your angular frequency your your angular speed or angular frequency of the wave that means super because the spring is system is executing simple harmonic motion so that the so thus this omega is this angular frequency of that simple harmonic wave <coughs> so now <coughs> differentiating this equation number three because i have to fit this that is this x in i have to fit this in, in this equation therefore differentiate equation equation three with respect to time we get dxn dt this will be because this is the function of t therefore argument of t here is alpha omega this will be a alpha omega exponential alpha omega t minus k n a double differentiate now differentiate again this will be t square x n dt so therefore this will become another iota omega term will be here so therefore this will be iota square omega square iota square is minus 1 this will be minus a omega square exponential iota omega t minus k n a equation number 4 so now we can uh, rearrange your first equation so this first equation can be rearranged like this by solving this so this will be your resulting equation beta into xn plus 1 plus xn minus 1 minus 2 xn since as we have uh, assumed the solution for this equation in terms of xn similarly we can calculate your xn plus 1 similarly putting value of n similarly by putting a value n into n plus 1 into this equation n minus 1 so thus, thus this is the solution for x in equation for n plus 1 th atom this is for n minus 1 th atom and also the force on nth atom is also modified like this so now by using equation your uh, equation this 3 your uh, 6 7 and 8 we get